<laughs> all right. Well, well, good news, everybody, because we're live. So now we're all looking really good. So uh, good morning, everybody. This is Don Chikowski with Fidelity National Title. And I would like to welcome you to this week's edition of Market of the Moment. Uh, thank you so much for, for those of you guys who are watching us on Facebook Live or later in the recorded version. Um, this week, we are going to, uh, you know, actually throughout the whole week of October, we spent a lot of time talking about business planning. And uh, Mr. Brandon Morgan is here to join us from Keller Williams Integrity First and the We Deal Real Estate team to uh, talk about business planning. Yeah, he's, he's at the We Deal Real Estate team world headquarters. That's right. uh, and uh, and so, so Brandon's right. going to share with us some of the, the things that he's doing to help his team plan for a successful 2021. Uh, we right. also have Ms. Sharon Terhune, the uh, oh. Vice President and Sales Manager Everybody. for Fidelity National Title. Good morning, Sharon. Thank you for joining Thank us. Yeah. And, and then uh, we are very fortunate to be joined by Annette Hunt from Guild Mortgage. And uh, each week uh, that Annette joins us, we are always excited because we have the nearly free money to talk about. <laughs> and and, and Annette, I feel like this week that we've we've had a lot of activity, so we're excited for your updates as well. So yeah, lots yeah. of activity. <laughs> yeah, so we'll be circling back to you shortly. Uh, and we have Miss Mindy Jones Navarro, the owner of the Amy Jones Group at Keller Williams Integrity First. Good morning, Mindy. Good morning, guys. Excited to be back. I know it's going to be a really good episode today. Absolutely. And uh, and so we are excited to hear about what is happening in the market as a whole. And uh, and so, Mindy, why don't you take us down that path of kind of give some insight into what's going on out there? Sure. So for everybody who's been watching us for quite some time now and hasn't been living under a rock, I think that everybody knows that we're dealing with extremely low inventory. I pulled the numbers this morning before I hopped on just to see exactly where it is that we stand as of today. And we've got 8,300 listings available for sale on the market. So again, that's homes, condos, townhouses, and the like in the MLS as compared to 18,000 two years ago and nearly 15,000 this time last year. So we're running anywhere between a half to a third of the available inventory that we typically have. So it's very tight out there, has remained competitive. And because of that, we're seeing a steep increase in pricing. And I know that everybody's feeling that. It's been offset a little bit by some historically low interest rates, which I know Annette will give us an update on. And we're so grateful for those to stay there as long as they can. Although uh, as the economy gets better, which we all hope will continue to happen, that typically provides us some challenges on the interest rate side. So there's definitely a sense of urgency to get in while we can with these really good interest rates. Uh, we have started to see the builders pick up their pace as much as they possibly can. They've had some material delays from COVID. So we've seen some clients whose close dates have actually been pushed into the new year, which is kind of unusual for builders who are trying to get their inventory closed by their fiscal year. We're seeing some getting pushed into January. So it's not good news to give to clients and certainly a challenge that we're seeing for folks who are trying to move from one property to another. But the builders are trying to pick up the pace, they've taken out 22,378 permits in Maricopa and Pinal County just during the first nine months of 2020. So to put that into context, that's up about 21% from the 18,000 that we saw this time last year. So they definitely are trying to increase their building. Um, we've seen the most permits pulled in the third quarter uh, than we have in many years. So this is the largest third quarter of new permits built that we've seen since 2005. So we know they're doing everything that they can to pick up the pace, to fill in the gaps. I just don't know if it's going to be enough to give us all the inventory that we need here in the short term. Yeah, we're, we're definitely playing that catch-up game. And, um, you know, the, the demand just is 
is shockingly high. And even as we're going to the holidays, the, the demand is, is still up so much. So that's right. Um, and there is opportunity though, for real estate agents who are watching out there and, and clients too, who need some help navigating this market. I mean, we're seeing anywhere between 15 and 20% appreciation year over year. So these are numbers that it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. So if you are looking to make a move, even though there are these challenges, um, it is definitely a can be a very profitable move if you have the right guidance to take the right steps and put them in the right order. And for our real estate agents who are watching out there with builders picking up the pace, we are seeing lots of delays and we are seeing some mistakes and things missed in the process. So it's very important that consumers have a real estate agent on their side. So that is a very big opportunity for you to reach out to your clients to see who's interested in new construction and how you can help guide them. And then the other piece is that less than 10% of folks who are in forbearance, so I know Annette will talk about this a little bit, our forbearance numbers in Arizona, thank God, are very low compared to the rest of the country. Um, but of all borrowers that are in forbearance, less than 10% of them have less than 10% equity in their home. That means 90% of folks who are in forbearance who are having trouble making their month to month payment actually have more than 10% equity in their home, which means there is a very uh, important opportunity for real estate professionals to find out who's struggling and help them uh, release the equity in their home. And there's a, a million and one ways to do that. Brandon's team um, is getting very creative around that and can talk about that as well. But it's just, it's, it's an opportunity for us to really help folks in need in this type of a market. And so I just want to kind of put that out there that those are really the opportunities that I see in the market right now. That's, that's great. Mindy. Wow. Great information to use out mm -hmm. there for sure. Mm -hmm. That also kind of makes you to say too, that you probably won't see a bunch of houses go to foreclosure because there's equity in them, right? Everybody thinks there's going to be this big dump of properties. Well, that's not, right. Not, there's money in them. Yeah. yeah, I mean, with that kind of equity, both lenders and borrowers have other options in lieu of foreclosure, right? And right. the equity is actually at a record high. So 45 million homeowners have positive or tappable equity in their home. So they may be having trouble making monthly payments or they may be having trouble living paycheck to paycheck and being impacted by COVID this year and, and definitely have struggles. It doesn't, it doesn't um, downplay the struggles that folks have this year. Uh, the, the, the beauty of this type of a market is we're able to leverage this asset to help folks out of what is a very challenging year. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, and, and it's interesting because we are seeing some products coming to, to market as well that, mm -hmm. that focus on this as well, helping people to uh, to unleash their uh, their equity in, in their property without selling their house or with putting okay. themselves in a position to, to pull that cash out while they're uh, looking at what's going to be next. So, uh, so, I, so I think that's really neat that we have uh, such great tools and, and resources coming, mm -hmm. coming to market right now as well. And if you guys need any help or, or if you're looking to, to be connected to those type of, of resources, connect with your Fidelity sales executive. We've got, um, mm -hmm. we've got a lot of access to those tools. So Absolutely. matter of fact, um, we, we're going to be putting together a webinar about one of them here in, in the next couple of weeks. So, yep. um, okay. Well, Mindy, thank you so much for mm -hmm. the update. And you can see you've got a fan club out there already. Uh, so, so, so. The fans are all coming out. Those, I love it. Yes. Those exactly. are some very active people in the real estate industry. So it's good to see them picking up some extra tips. The more that we can talk about the opportunity for folks, the stronger community we can build right here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, okay. So let's talk about the money. And Annette, so we want to know how low can we go uh, or are we seeing anything different at this point so uh, so we appreciate you being a part of this and uh and really looking forward to your update each week so how are oh, we looking yeah. uh, in the financial part so things are going really well right now as far as interest rates we're still below two percent our FHA and Govy deals right now are just amazingly low. So I locked one in at 2.625 the other day. So it's, oh I know, I know it's legit. It's still crazy out there um, as far as interest rates. 
Something that helped us out a little bit this week to give us a little decrease in the rates was the fact that the markets went down a little bit. So starting the week, we had a lull in the markets. Yesterday, they were down over 3%. We did have GDP come out, though, this morning. Oh, my gosh. And that was some amazing stats right there. Insane, right? It was 33.1%. And so what had affected the markets earlier in the week was the uptick in the COVID cases. So they're testing more. We've got more cases out there. And that kind of put some fear in the market. So people were pulling their cash out. Now they're going back in. It was above what the anticipation was for the GDP growth. So it's kind of it's kind of. Um, situated the market this morning um, as far as an increase of about 1% versus the 4 to 5% decline over the last few days in the markets. So that's had a little bit of an effect um, on the interest rates earlier on in the week. Of course, our interest rates as of this morning are flat. So they're the same as what they what we had yesterday. So and and remember, our rates fluctuate every day. And at the beginning of COVID in March, they were all over the place. So you didn't know from one day to the next what they were going to be. And in some cases during those times, we had three to four different changes. So, but right now they're still holding steady. I'm really interested to see what next week's going to bring as everybody else is, I'm sure. So we'll see how the election affects our interest rates going into next week. We could see some volatility. I would I would guess that we will see some volatility in the markets and in interest rates over the next couple of weeks, kind of depending on what happens. So just be prepared for that. Um, and some good news when Mindy said, as far as foreclosures are concerned, yes, Arizona is in a really good position as far as people in forbearance. I don't see us having the foreclosures or the reduction in prices that many people hear oftentimes in the media. I think it's I think they're giving false positives and every market is different. So ours looks really good. We're roughly at 2% of homeowners right now are still currently in forbearance or just now coming out of forbearance. And on that note, Fannie Mae just brought out a new guideline when it comes to forbearance. So let's say your client has been in forbearance, just like Mindy was saying, you know, and they've got that built up equity because only 10% don't have equity of those homeowners and let's just say they go to sell if they sell the property and they have not made three payments like before the old rule you have to make three payments before it would be considered you know out of forbearance and they could they could refinance the home in this case if they sell it they can go ahead and buy a new home so they can use that equity they don't have to make the three payments and purchase another home. So that's really good news when it comes to the forbearance. Excellent. It's really yeah, well, interesting that well. number dropped pretty dramatic, uh, like quickly. Yeah, yeah. And oh, sorry. They were also saying too that to get pre COVID, as far as GDP is concerned, we have about another 12 to 13% in GDP growth to get to that pre COVID place. So we're not too far off of that. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I was watching the market this morning, and it was still down a little bit this morning when uh, when I was watching. And I'm not really sure how that happens with a 33% uh, a GDP increase uh, quarter over quarter. So, you know, I mean, that those are all kinds of records that are happening out there. So, so we'll have to see as, as a lot of these things even out. You know, something else that we're starting to see is we're starting to see some of the investors coming back as well. And um, you know, and Sharon and I are going to have some opportunities coming up around that for, for folks that are interested um, uh, on some really targeted um, uh, opportunities working with some of those, some of that Wall Street money that's coming back to the real estate market to, to buy and hold. And so um, so we're, we're going to be seeing some of that. And as we go into our little bit of what is expected to be a little bit slower season throughout the holidays, that's going to keep the demand there, right? right? That's going to keep the, the demand there as, as 
we see that money coming into the market. I think it'll be interesting to see, and I know we've kind of talked about this be before, kind of the speculation about what the the seasonality will really look like through the holiday right. season. There's so many factors that are so very different this year than typical, right? I mean, one of the reasons we see a slowdown in the last three months of the year is because there are a lot of events that people are going to and they're preparing for holiday parties and they're going out and doing other things on their time off, right? Their typical house looking, you know, weekend times, evening times, they're typically doing a lot of other things. And I don't know that that same level of activity exists this year. And so I wonder if because of that, we may not see as you know, great of a difference this holiday season. Uh, you also have people who are typically traveling out of state for the holidays. And so that cuts back on just the number of active people in the market and also the number of sellers who pull their homes off the market because they're doing those kinds of things. So I just don't know that we're going to see as much of those two things occurring. Um, what I do think is, is a great opportunity though. You mentioned investors are coming back and I think you're talking more institutional investors or, you know, right. investors who are doing multi-package buys and things like that a great market for people who haven't ever thought about building wealth through real estate as an individual before. I think sometimes people hear the term investor, I think that that's got to look a certain way. But we're seeing people take, you know, home equity lines of credit on their primary residences where they're still nowhere near full value on their home. And they're using that money as a down payment, or even we've seen full purchases this year of investment properties. And so I think that's definitely part of the conversation. If, if you aren't looking to move or aren't looking to sell, is there some tappable equity in your primary residence that you could leverage in some other capacity? I mean, the beauty of buying a rental property right now is you can pay market value or pretty close to market value or even go over market value and cash flow almost instantly because your interest rate is so low, you get a mortgage that's well under what a rent look like and uh, so those are opportunities people wait years for yeah absolutely and i think that um you know it, it's funny because we talk to a lot of folks who on occasion help people find rental properties so brandon if somebody mm -hmm. came to you and said hey i want to find a uh, a three-bedroom house with a pool in gilbert to rent um you know i'm guessing that that that's a pretty big undertaking at this point uh even for just a rental Oh yeah, I mean, finding rentals are just as hard, if not harder, right now than finding homes that are actually for sale. So, um, and then the problem with that is it's not, you know, it's not the same thing as buying. So you could be putting ten applications into homes and paying fifty, a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars each, each one just for an application, and you never get that money back. So it's it's pretty not. So we we're, we're definitely talking to anybody who's talking thinking about renting, especially in the. You know, when when they're paying twenty three, twenty four, twenty six hundred dollars a month, about what that looks actually by, so you're you're not paying someone else's mortgage. Right. Yeah. But but that's what, so from an investor standpoint, though, knowing that that those rental rates are getting pushed up like that, the 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 actual rents are getting pushed up. That. Um, that's, you know, I mean, yeah. If you if you're in more of the market to buy a rental, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. And I so, think it's not even just long term rentals. It's also the Airbnb and VRBO concept. You know, we thought at the beginning of COVID that those were going to be gone for the foreseeable future. But what I think people forgot is that we're in such a low inventory market that I've got sellers that are using those just so that they can get out of their home because they want to sell and take advantage of the current market, but they're not going to be in their new build or they haven't found what they're looking at. So the price of Airbnb, we just had someone who went in $7,000 a month for a five right. bedroom home in Gilbert for one month. And now in the grand scheme of things, it was okay. They got, you know, much over for their house. And I mean, you know, it has to be a mathematical equation, but that's insane. I mean, the opportunity for someone to buy something like that and leverage it for the foreseeable future for our low inventory market. I mean, you, it's a great opportunity. Yeah. Definitely. For sure. So, okay. Well, um, so Annette, thank you. Mindy, thank you. Brandon, we're going to focus on you now. No. <laughs> and, uh, you're in the spotlight. You're on the center of the screen and everything. So it works out perfect. Um, oh, wow. Okay. 
Yeah. So, uh, so Brandon, um, you know, thank you for, for joining us today and, um, you know, we're excited to hear, you know, we've, we've spent a lot of time this month talking about business planning, you know, that, that, um, you know, 2021 started in the business world on October 1st. Right. So, right. so what were the activities that we're doing now are the things that we're the results we'll see in that first quarter of, of 2021. So can, can you first tell us a little bit about your team, about the, the, the folks that are on the team, how many people you have, how long they've been in real estate, just kind of give us a little overview of that. And then we can start to talk about how you're helping them uh, business plan. Yeah, so um, we deal real estate. It's been around for about 18 years. It uh, was started by my father-in-law, Gary Smith. And I came in on in 2015 as the team leader. And uh, we are currently at 11 agents, three of which are brand new, never even done a deal yet. They, they're literally in testing right now, but we still do a business plan for them. So um, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's about us. But uh, we want to talk about business planning. And uh, when Don brought this up, it was about how do we talk to people who are just starting in this business and then also who people who have been in the business for a while and uh, kind of touching on what Don said just a second ago about October. It, like you said, it's because the activities that we're doing right now is going to be the business that we're doing in January, February. And if you want to start your year off right, you, you count those numbers in January. So you can't create new habits January 1st and expect those results to happen right away. So what we really teach is we have to get in the right mindset and we have to know what training that we have to do. And we have to know the things that we have to do now in order to be that person in January. So, okay. So now you've mentioned though, you, you have some like uh, some agents who are more experienced and you have agents that are brand new. So, right. um, so, so two different conversations, I'm guessing when it comes to, you know, I mean, when I first started working at Fidelity and Sharon's like, Don, where's your business plan? Uh, I was like, and then she's like, you know, she gave me this form and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is real work I've got to do in real stuff. I've got to put into all this, uh, you know, I, I can't just, you know, talk my way through it. Um, and, and so, so how do you help people see like, you know, the people who maybe who haven't been doing it for a long time, but who've been in the business or the people who are brand new, because really it should be something we're excited about, right? It really should be something that we're, we're turning that page in and, um, and look, look at what we're going to accomplish this year. Look what our plan is. Yeah. Right. And it's all about the model. So can, are you modeling after yourself of last year? Or are you modeling if you're brand new off of someone that's doing the business that you want to do this year? Right. So we're looking at um, what are the activities that a person that, you know, so um, just kind of starting at the beginning. Uh, the first thing we have to know is, um, is kind of your, your one big annual goal. So after figuring out what you want to put away in your savings for emergencies, what you want to be putting away for fun experiences, toys, vacations, that kind of stuff, what you want to put away for uh, retirement. You have to look at the big picture of all the things that you want to achieve by the end of the year. And then you have to get, get into that with that one goal. And for us, it's usually the units of amount, the amount of homes that you're going to sell in that year. And um, whether you're, you're an agent that's been in production for five, 10 years or someone that's just brand new, um, you want to have that one goal so you can create that one page business plan is what we we call it. And I, I know across all industries, they usually call it the same thing. It's a one, three, five, right? The, the one big goal, the th three priorities and the five strategies. And we go down that list um, uh, uh, d determining what that is. And for me, it's always the, you know, the, the triangle of real estate, the leads, the listings and the leverage, uh, figuring out uh, how many leads we need to create throughout the year, um, how many listings or how many buyers we need to work with and close and then and then who we need to have in our corner for the leverage part. So, um, you know, that's the business plan for us and the whole, we, we don't, you know, it's, 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 I think the most time consuming part of the business plan for us is really creating that goal and figuring out exactly why we're in business, uh, starting with the calendar first and figuring out how much time we can take off and that kind of stuff. And then going into the <laughs> activities that we have to do. I, I mean, I think that's important though, Don, I think that yeah, you have no. to schedule the first thing that should go onto your schedule every single year is a vacation and the time with your wife or husband and the time with the kids and, and then figure out, okay, if I just now took off 20, 30, 40 days of the year, um, what activities do I have to do in the rest of the time to make sure that I hit those goals and who do I need to be to, to be that person? You know, and, and I, I agree with you. I, I think that it is important because here's the thing. It's not that you can't accomplish 
things by taking when you're taking time off. It's just you have to account for that, right? Right. Because if you don't account for it, then suddenly you know, well, you know, I, my plan is to take off the month of December, and uh, and <laughs> so, but then nothing happens, and you're like, okay, well, I didn't plan on on, on that part of my business. So, so Frank, I 100% agree. Will you will you explain a little bit because we use that exact same form on our team as well. Um, the, the goals, the priorities and the strategies. And, and uh, when you're talking priorities and the strategies, can you give us an, some examples of what those might say? Because, you know, we talk about this on our team all the time. It has to be, you know, you can't just say, hey, I want to, you know, let's just say one of your strategies wasn't a business plan. Maybe it was a personal business plan. You know, I want to, I want to lose some weight, you know, oh, great. I want to lose some weight. Well, that's right. so vague. That's never going to happen, but I'd love to lose 20 pounds by December 31st. Now that's a concrete plan, right? So what right. does that look like when you're coaching your your people uh, for that? With, you know, because obviously the seasoned ones that have been with you for a while have done it more than once, so they probably get it. But some of the newer ones coming in, there's probably obviously a lot of conversation around that. So, um, I mean, it could be... Uh, everybody is a little bit different. So um, like I have some people that it's okay. I'm, you know, the, their, their main priority would be buyers. And then we're going to list the, the five things they're going to be doing to get the buyers. Right. Um, or it could be um, uh, the, you know, knowledge. And then each thing like, you know, is it one, one book a month? Is it uh, two classes a week? Whatever it is like that. So yeah. Is that answering your question? Yeah. Well, I was just trying to narrow yeah. down. Like, is it is it wrapped around like, um, okay, I want to get you, you. My goal is two listings a month. Okay, fine. How yeah. many listings a month? I'm gonna door knock a hundred doors. You know, three times a week. I'm gonna go to six open houses a week, or you know, do six, six open right. houses a week, or things like that. I was just curious as to like if there was any, or is everybody just completely different, or do you have kind of a plan that the team sort of takes? So um, the one goal has to, everything has to be measurable. So the, the goal has to be a, a measurable thing. So the goal is typically, um, I don't really like to say amount of money that you make. I like to say the units that you're doing or the, 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 the families that you're helping. Um, and then the, th the, the priorities can be a little bit more vague. Um, so it could be the, the, the fo focus points of your business. And, but the, the strategies again have to be measurable because it's not just about this one page business plan. It doesn't end there, right? Yes, that can be on your wall, but it really goes down to that weekly accountability with the 411 or, or whatever accountability source that you're doing. And for us, it's the 411. It's uh, uh, four weeks, uh, one month, one year. So we look at that big goal and we look at the um, each, each, each month, we, we figure out how to break that down to meet each one of your priorities and then go down to your... Um, uh, down to weekly, you have to get as small as possible. What are, you know, how many people do I need to talk to this week? Because what we found is your business is a direct re reflection of the amount of conversations that you're having. Excellent. So. And that's where that personal time really comes into place and in getting that calendar, because if you're going to break down your goals into those four weeks and know each week what you're going to do, if you're not really going to be in the office for four weeks, of a single month because you've got planned vacation or holiday time off or whatever that might look like, then you've got to adjust your goals or else you're not planning realistically. You're planning using someone else's template and not really making sure right. that it's fitting your totally. life. And uh, I, I think the last part is um, to be really successful in 2021 and to make sure that your business plan matches um, you know, reality and everything is know your numbers, know, know, know everything from who, how many people you're talking to right now, because the business has changed a lot. It used to be you had five or 10 or 20 conversations and, you, and you'd, you'd get a couple of deals. Now it could be that 50 or 100. So you have to know how many conversations you have to have, what's your conversion rate, um, you know, um, how many closings do you have to have a month to meet that goal. But really, it's even more than that. You have to know what the mindset is that you have to stay in. So um, how are you going to keep your mindset in the right place, focused on the right things? And does that mean that you need to take a vacation at the end of every month or every three months? Um, uh -huh. And then also knowing what skills you need to improve in, because sometimes we have these goals and we have these strategies that we have no idea how we're going to do them. So it's a perfect time right now in November, December. Go get that training now. So, um, you know, join the extra classes. 
um, join, you know, find online classes, talk to Don about the, the different things that they're doing in uh, November, not in December, because he's taking the whole month off. And then um, <laughs> I did not approve that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then and then also the habits. <laughs> habits are super important about starting now, because what is uh, uh, Gary Keller say? It takes 66 days to create a new uh, new habit. So um, that's all we have left in this year. So like I said, you're not going to become a new person just because you made a New Year's resolution on December 31st. That has to start now. Um, so really know that and then start with, you know, describe the person who you are in three words and then give yourself that affirmation every morning. So, it, you know, if, if the person that's accomplishing the, the goals that you want to be are, you know, schedule oriented or um, energetic or whatever it is, call yourself that every morning starting now and then hopefully by December or by January 1st, you'll be that person. I love it. Yeah. And start getting yourself around those people yeah. too, right? I mean, if you're not already in a circle of people like you want to be, this is the time to start to realign yeah. yourself, put yourself in the position to be around people that are accomplishing the things that you want to accomplish next year. It, like Brandon said, it is a process. And so take the next few months, build your pipeline for next year, have conversations with people about getting ready to list after the new year, find the people you need to start hanging around with, you know, start to make those changes now so that you're really hitting the ground running hard come January. So, Brandon, you mentioned knowing your numbers and how important that is. So, so if you could kind of help us to understand how somebody gets to know their numbers for one, and then you also mentioned that, you know, that they have to be realistic and what, because writing a bunch of things down on a piece of paper is different. And, and you, you talked about learning, you talked about going out and getting educated. But how do you make sure that, that they're being realistic in the goals that they're setting? Can you kind of tell us how you help people? So I guess two questions. One, knowing the numbers, how does that happen? And two, okay. what, how do you determine what's realistic? Okay, so how do you know your numbers um, is, is based on the activities. I think it's failing forward. So if I talk to 20 people today and I didn't set an appointment, then I have talked to 30. If I talk to 30 and I didn't set an appointment, then I have talked to 40. If I talk to 40 and I get set an appointment, I am 40 to one, right? right. And then you can look at, is that, am, am I having a, a, a skills issue? Is it a conversion issue there? And you can maybe bring that down a little bit through, uh, through training and, 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 uh, and practice. Right. Um, but, um, other than that, I mean, knowing your numbers is everything knowing, um, uh, from the financing standpoint, know what your profit is, right? How much money am I spending to make a dollar? Right. Um, you know, are you, are, are you following any type of model for, for the money that you're making? And then for your numbers on, um, you know, if I go on four listing appointments and I only get two, I'm at a 50% conversion. And you have to know this because when I'm setting my goals at the beginning of the year, or my team is, and a conversion is at 40 or 75%. If I want to take, you know, 20 listings and clear tw sell 20 homes, how many do I actually have to list? Right. That's super important. If my conversion is only at 40% or 50%, I'm going to have to talk to a lot more people, um, than my goal is. Right. So Brandon, people really like me, so I feel like I should have a hundred percent conversion. So right. um, you know, so 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 what do you say to, to that person? So the realistic part of this. My yeah. job is not to tell you if your goal is a risk realistic or not, it's to give you the tools and systems to meet that goal. So um if you know, if like I, I have a brand new agent, I don't want to call him out by name, but he has a huge goal. He wants to sell 60 homes in his first year of real estate. Wow. Is that a is that a realistic goal? Some people might say no, but is he? The, the question is: Are you prepared to do what it takes to meet that goal? And if you're not, if, if you can't, and, and if we show them models of people that are doing sixty transactions a year in their first year in real estate, they better be willing to do that, right? So, um, you know, I think that people with I'd rather people have really big unrealistic goals than small measly ones that can be easily hit. Yeah, love it. No, yeah. love it. Yeah. So, and, and I think that's great though. I think that there's a lot to be said for, you know, if somebody comes to you and says they want to sell 60 homes and it's their first year in real estate, like, you know, I mean, that's a, a, a take a big gulp moment because that's a big number uh, for, for your first year in real estate. But 
Um, but I do think it's important to say, well, how do you plan to get there? Right. Uh, right. So you don't have to say, well, you can't do it. Um, uh, but, but let's talk about what things are, are happening there. What about like baseline numbers? Are, are there baseline numbers that, that if I'm that new agent, are, are there baseline numbers that I would tell them to expect on conversion uh, from the, how many people I need to talk to? How many, is there a framework that you would uh, recommend that they use? Um, framework for conversion. Um, well, well, a framework for building your numbers, right? So, so framework for saying, okay, so, so I'm newly licensed and now I want to, to go out. How many calls do I need to make to, to get that appointment? Now you and I both know that that number consistently adjusts as your skills develop, but, right. but as I'm that new person, you know, is there, is there a number I should be looking at in the beginning saying, I need to make 40 phone calls or 50 phone calls to get an appointment. Um, so we go back to the 36, 12, three. So, um, you know, the, the, you're going to focus on the activities first. So three hours a day of lead generation is a must. So, um, the, 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 you know, we're going to start with that system and say, okay, three and three hours, um, uh, you, you need to be just doing the lead generation. And uh, uh, I can't remember what the 12 or the 36 is, but um, <laughs> so it's 36 deals. And then I think it's, what is it? 12 weeks or 12 months? Yeah, yeah 12 yeah. months. So um, 12, months. 12 months. So it's just about the time. So uh, I was looking at Mindy and I lost my train of thought. She's so pretty. <laughs> um, <laughs> so <laughs> It happens to all of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, Brandon so, is a master at this stuff. Kind of distracting, to be Brandon, <laughs> Brandon is a master at this stuff, though. He may not have been able to remember the numbers, but the, the right. thing that is so great about Brandon, and I'm so appreciative of being in an office with him. So remember I said about getting into business with people who do the things that you want to be able to do. Brandon is so um, thoughtful and intentional about helping agents get to their goals because he can help not only put a plan around your interest, but also ensure that there's numbers around it, that you're held accountable to it, which in, in reality for the people that want to achieve goals, accountability is something they seek, right? Accountability right. is not someone putting their thumb on you because they want some outcome from what you're accomplishing. Accountability is for someone who wants to get to their goal and needs some help to get there, right? I mean, that's why people pay money to be held accountable because they want the outcome. And Brandon believes in the goals that people have for them. And so this idea of the three hours of lead generation a day, the 12 months a year, and the ability to get 36 deals, that all comes from the idea of having at least 20 conversations a day with people. And conversations can look different, right? I mean, we're in the era, era of text messages. We're in the era of instant messenger on Facebook. I mean, there's a million ways to get into conversation with people, but a two-way conversation with someone involving real estate, doing that over and over and over again, that's how you build both your immediate business your long-term business, you build relationships with other real estate agents. I mean, you can do that lead generation for all kinds of things. But I think yeah. a lot of people get into real estate and they forget that it's like if you were the owner of a coffee shop, you, you don't just sit at the counter and just hope people come in and talk to you all day. And then at the end of the day, wonder if no one came in, why and what? I mean, we, we have to get out there and talk to people. And so right. I love what Brandon does in his systems because it really helps people help other people. And I think that that's a, that's a big deal. Right. And we are in the lead generator. We're not in the sales business. We're not in the business of selling homes. We're not in, you know, like you said, a coffee owner, a coffee shop owner is not in the business of coffee. It's all lead generation. We are in the lead generation business. Business owners are lead generators and that's, that, that's what they are. Right. So nice. love it. Yeah. So Brennan, so, okay, so we've now sat down and, and you, you helped me to, to see why I need to, to plan, right? You, right. you helped me uh, to, to start to, to put together these numbers and, uh, and, and to put together my strategy. I've got this down, um, probably helpful if I review it with somebody, right? To talk about what these things are, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that's what, because, you know, I can tell you Sheridan doesn't just let me go and create it and not ever look at it, right? Because that right. accountability piece is important. 
Uh, and and so um, so because you know, but that that is, and, and and Mindy was just talking about how how good it is to have somebody say, but didn't you say you wanted to do it like this? And uh, and and that's good because it helps you get recentered sometimes when when we get off track. Um, so then from there, then what happens with the plan? So, so you guys have discussed it. I'm on your team, Brandon. We've discussed it. You like it. I like it. What happens next? So I think I mentioned a minute ago. So after you create this plan, it's, it's all about using that. And so we call it also the GPS. It's goals, priorities, mm -hmm. and, and strategies. But I always like, I mean, it also makes sense because it is the roadmap to your business. And um, so it needs to be something that's looked at constantly because if we're not looking at the map constantly, we might go off, right? And we have to instantly correct if we do that. So we do. We, we personally look at it um, uh, weekly with my agents, um, but they're expect they should be. Every, if you're doing this, you should be looking at it daily. Daily, you should be tracking your numbers. Daily, you should be saying, did I do the activities that I said, said I would do? So on that 411 worksheet that we personally do, um, it's, it's broken up into the days of the week. Monday, I need to hit uh, you know, 100 contacts. I need to um, you know, set one appointment. I need to um, read two chapters in this book. I need to go to the gym for two hours or one hour or 30 minutes. I need to, you know, it's, it's different for everybody. And then Tuesday, I need to do this, 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 and this. And then Wednesday, I need to plan for my open house on Friday or whatever it is, right? So um, so once you're done with your business plan and your 135 or your GPS, it you you can't just stop there. You have to have someone holding you accountable um, you're, yourself daily and then at least weekly so that you if you do go off, you can instantly course correct and get back on, 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 on the right path. So... So it doesn't just go in the drawer and, and then we look at it when we, we pull it back out for planning for next year. Right. So, right. Uh, so, so, so it's something that's going to be a living part of our business, something that we're going to be adapting with. Do you provide it to your coach or uh, I mean, like obviously as a team yeah. leader, right. Your, your team would uh, be reviewing this with you, but you as right. the team leader, do you provide it to your coach? I do. Yeah. So my coaches who holds me accountable, um, on my own personal business planner 401 and then we also go f further I, I i recommend people put it in at least three places that they'll see daily um so that would be like on your mirror at home maybe in your car at your desk having it in these three places so it stays um stays really uh, uh relevant to you and uh um and just making sure that you constantly see it or at least having something you know if it's if it's a unit number or if it's something tangible, like we like, like we all talk about big whys all the time and big whys, you know, world peace or something like that. It's not the sand on a beach, right? Um, so we always, I always tell people, find that thing that you can actually feel or touch or see daily. Um, so, and, and then put your 411 next to it or put your GPS next to it so that it's not something that's super far away, right? Have that five, 10, 20 year plan, but also have that next year or our next month plan, right? Or that, 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 that next quarter plan. And then that, that also brings me to the other, constantly look at these goals because if you're uh, six months in uh, to the year and you're like, you know, super close to meeting your goals, maybe your goals need to get bigger. So don't only plan in October, um, you know, change it. Don't change your goal down, figure out what you got to do to bring it up, but definitely um, be prepared to bring it up. If you, if you realize that the activities that you're doing are really working and, and you're getting close. Yeah. I love that idea too of putting the goals up somewhere like Don you were saying and Brandon the suggestions you had we're doing an event here at Keller Williams Integrity First on the 17th of November um, where we're going to be having some different activities here in the office and one of them is we're, we're going to create some big visual where everybody can put their goals up on this one big thing that can then hang around the office and it'll just be a really good reminder of all those goals. So that's open to any agents who want just some extra accountability to know that their goals are going to be written somewhere up on a board with a bunch of other people trying to strive uh, for some big things in 2021. So if you have any questions about that, you can reach out either to Fidelity or for, to Brandon or I. Being visual is super important. I'm going to turn this, even though this will look weird. But this is this is my visual, like this is everything visual in my office. It's my family 
and then my schedule out of out of uh, oh, what are the, whatever those things are called dominoes. Dominoes. But being extremely like you have to see it and punch yourself in the face with it. Like every single day, the first thing I see is my family and my schedule. Um, and, uh, I do that because if you're not instantly reminded constantly of what your goals are and why you're in the, why I'm in this building 10 hours a day or why I'm out doing the business that I'm doing, um, you know, th there has to be that reason. Cause it's not just be, it's not, it's not just not, it's not just because you want to be away from your family all day, or it's not just because you want to, um, you know, um, you know, it, it has to be something really important. So that's my big why my small why is like, you know. The, the little things, the, the vacations, the, that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. Brandon, you had mentioned that, you know, adjusting your goals up is important, right? If you're, you know, if it's March of 2021 and you're 60% to your goal, then um, then it might be time to, to, to take those goals up. But you did, you followed that up with don't, don't adjust them down. And, uh, and I love that because, right, so this is where we started out. This is where, we, you know, and, and I, and, you know, I, there's a lot of great things out there, but there's one about, you know, when, when the goals, you know, if you fall for, uh, short of your goals, but you still accomplish more than you, you otherwise would have, then you've still done something, something pretty amazing there. Right. right. So, um, so what do you say though, to that person who is at, you know, at the end of March, so the end of the first quarter, uh, and they are 10% to their goals for 2021. You know, how do you get them back on track or, or what do you say to them to not take those goals and adjust them down? If they are at 10% in March, we obviously did a really bad job keeping them on the map, um, you know, the, on the roadmap and what their goals were, or it's just not working. And sometimes that's okay. Sometimes that happens. Maybe the lead generation tactics that they chose just aren't producing results. So that's something that um, instead of saying, okay, well, you wanted to do 20 deals this year, but you're half of the year, this is what you're doing is not working. So let's do 10. They're not going to feel like a winner. So especially if it's in that uh, first quarter, um, we just have to look at it. Is it doubling down the activities? Is it um, uh, maybe changing, changing a lead generation source? Is it a skills issue or a systems issue? Right. And the beauty so, of absolutely. the tracking though, Brandon, right, is that you won't know any of those things unless you're tracking the activity. Right. And if you're just not doing the activities and there's no numbers, then obviously you just aren't going to meet your goal and you need to find a new job. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that too, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. the world, you not be on the team the rest of the year anyway, so it's kind of a real right. <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's a, no, but I think it's important though, right? So, so the, the fact is that that there are opportunities to say, okay, look at you have these three things that you wanted to feed into your production. So it was open houses, it was cold calling, and it was um, door knocking. Door knocking. Yeah. So, so, but nobody's answering the door when, when you're door knocking, and and so these things aren't happening. You're not getting any results from that at all. So, so maybe we need to take the energy from that and move it to a new area for us to try. But you can't know that. You can think that. You can guess right. that, but you don't know that until you track the numbers and you know where your business is coming from. Right. We have to be careful with that though, because I, I I know this is true that a lot of the times when we have these, where, where it's just not working, it's, you know, oh my, no one's answering the door, right? They're this far away from a, uh, from huge success, right? It's, 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 it's usually, you know, it's, it's usually a skills issue. It's right. not usually a systems issue. Right. So we just have to work. We have to push them that extra 10% and get them to, to maybe change some change to the littlest thing that they're doing. And then the success will follow. Um, so I think you have to be really careful with looking at it monthly no. and saying, Oh, well, well, Facebook isn't working. Facebook does not work. I am not using Facebook. I'm going to go to calling for sell by owners. And then you call for sell by owners for three weeks. And then you sit down with me, oh, face the four cell banners do not work. I'm not doing that. And by the end of the year, you've done 12 things and none of them worked because you were never willing to give it the time that it needed yeah. or, the, or the skills that you needed to have to do it, right? So um, you have to- And sometimes think, that's you know. because you don't enjoy it, 
I mean, right. that's the other part of having a good leader, you know, like someone like Brandon who can sit down and have these kinds of conversations, thank you, with you, um, <laughs> is because you've got to also find something that you enjoy. And and Brandon's right. You've got to you've got to give it the time it deserves. You can't just tap out. I remember I, I listened to this interview on grit and what the basic components of grit were. And one of the things that the girl who, who wrote this book on grit did with her daughter was she would have her start a new activity. And the only rule was she couldn't tap out of the activity until a season. So it was okay right. for her not to be a professional dancer, a professional soccer player. She didn't have to stick with it for her whole life, but she had to give it its time. If that was a quarter or a season, whatever the, the time period of that class was, she just wasn't allowed to leave that class. And I think that that's a really important lesson for people because they need to give it the time. They need to, to um, give it the skill, right? Nothing in our life just comes naturally without any work. And if they've done both of those things and either they don't enjoy it or they don't find that they're getting their results, then move on quickly to something else. And I also see, and that's that's totally true. And um, thank you for uh, talking about that. But I, I I think you kind of touched on it is give it the skill. If you're giving something to only twenty percent, you're not going to see the results. So a lot of time, I'll ask, um, do you truly feel like this isn't working, or you weren't working it? Um, you know, are you actually doing the activities at a hundred percent, or? Are you doing it at 50% and expecting 100% of the results? Brandon, we talk about that all the time. It's 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 the thing between skill and will. Okay. Right. You you can teach the skills, you can't teach the will. If they don't have the will, there's nothing then they're not going to do those activities that are going to be necessary to to succeed at their goal. It's just not going to happen. So nope. And that's across industries, right? Which is the beauty I think Everywhere. of this broadcast that we do every week with you guys is this works well for people who are watching because they're interested in real estate as a homeowner or a renter or you know somebody who wants to take advantage of the market it's meaningful for real estate agents who are trying to build their business or find their home or look for new partners and it's beneficial for all of our clients who are out there who catch us because we were tagged and they want to know what's going on it's applicable to their own hobbies their own careers their own businesses there's just i think so much value that you can pull um from conversations of getting people together that just want to do the right thing and and dream big yeah so um you know it, it's funny because mindy i think you've been on this entire month and and sharon has been on and annette you've been on for a significant part of it and how many times have we heard about the gps uh form right yeah, so, so come up yeah, in every so, conversation <laughs> yeah, so, so we intentionally oh, planned wow. october to be our month to talk about business planning because we want to help you be successful in your business planning and, and and reach the goals that you're looking for so if you don't have access to a gps form if you don't if you want somebody to sit down and review that with you you have a a, a screen full of people right now who are who would be amazing at doing that with you and, uh, and would be very happy to do that because we want to see the people around us be successful. And that's one of the really unique things about this business and, and so many of the great partners that we work with is that, that we're investing in our competition. Is that accurate? I don't think it's, it really is. Kind of our community, our community. Exactly, that's why I wanna, <laughs> yeah, because it's easy to say competition while you help, you know, but the reality is that, that it is our community. And if we're all out there providing right. great service, that uh, that everybody gets better, and right. and that provides a better customer experience for our clients as well. And and so I, I you know I know that when somebody works with Brandon, I know that when somebody works with Mindy, or if they're working with Annette, that they are likely to have a great experience in either selling their home or buying their home. So okay, well, so so I'm on your brand, you're going to spark a conversation, John. And we never do this <laughs> on Market of yeah. the Moment, but I'm going to go out there saying too. You know, no matter whether it's real estate or title or, or mortgage, you know, any industry that we all revolve around on here. If you don't work for someone that works with you on business planning, and Ed, I'm sure you'd love to know some great folks that want to get into the mortgage industry. I'd love to talk to you if you want to get into title, or, you know, or, or change title. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, you want to surround, like Mindy said, you want to surround yourself around successful people 
that are like-minded that want want to to do you know to have success have those vacations have you know a, a business plan that that makes your life just you know full and, and that's that's what it's about so i know we don't have to do that but i just want to put that well, out and there that's for everybody. A, and that's a really good point i think everybody on this on this video right now every year has been making their goals and same thing for us you know every year year in and year out we are building these goals right. and building our gps and really wanting to know and surrounding ourselves with those people who help us be successful yeah, so absolutely. it's fun okay so fun. i made myself a mental commitment i'm going to try to start saving the last uh five minutes of our time together to, to kind of talk about anything that's upcoming and or anything that that we've got going on specifically. So so Mindy, I know you mentioned the event on November seventeenth, um, and, and so we can, so you can reach out to any of us on here if you would like to be involved in that uh, and and to to talk about um, you know it's like a, a goal review. Is that what it is, Mindy? Yeah, so I think the idea is it's, um, you know, really an appreciation for all of the real estate agents who stepped up in a very challenging year, not only for themselves and their families, but for their community and their clients. And so to give back, we want to provide some opportunities that day to really get charged up for 2021. So we're going to have some social media classes in the morning focused on Instagram, if that's something that you want to um, help build your business around for 2021. Um, and we'll also be doing something in the afternoon around different types of lead generation levers. So um, how uh, really just how you want to meet clients. That's really all that that means, how you want to talk to people and make it fun for you to do. Um, so we're going to be doing some classes on that in the afternoon and also giving a, a big visual opportunity to get our goals up on paper. Absolutely. Excellent. And then there are there are opportunities with the uh, the Amy Jones group as well. And, uh, and and so somebody is looking to to grow their business with uh, the, the Amy Jones group. Having a conversation with Mindy is a, a great thing to do. Um, and um, and Brandon, I assume the same would be true of Weedio Real Estate, that, yep. that you guys are growing quickly and you have a lot of business that 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 is there for uh, people who would like to be partnered with you in, in the uh, business, correct? Yeah, I'd love to talk to you for sure. Yep. Excellent. How many people did you have at your pumpkin patch this year, Brandon? 400. 400. Brandon does every year a pumpkin patch for his one of his neighborhoods, and they had 400 people out there. Like, it's so cool. Yeah. These are the kinds of activities that you should you should want to build a business around. It's, it's really yeah, awesome. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. How do you get 400 pumpkins anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just put it in the back right. of his car. So, uh, <laughs> you like a pumpkin gift card, you know? Here you go. Go, go. You yeah. go get it. TJ, TJ over at Superstition Farmers Market, which is at, right in front of uh, Vertuccio awesome. Farms, uh -huh. is an amazing guy. That guy just just is so helpful every year. He comes and delivers them for us, That's and uh, wow. they all are great grown in Arizona. For a local yeah, business. He is an yeah. awesome guy. He's super helpful. They have great, great produce. So, yeah. Very cool. Um, and then, Mindy, I don't even know if you've got all this put together yet, but your December 4th event, is that um, yes. something you're so, yet? Yeah, I can talk a little bit about it if maybe you want to preview who our guest is going to be. We're so excited for this. It's going to be on December 4th, and it's going to be at Parlay Kitchen and Cocktails in Chandler, Arizona, which is another locally owned beautiful space they're opening specially for us that morning they're not typically open in the morning um and it's going to be on december 4th which is a friday um and we are going to be doing an event focused on women in business in real estate for 2021 we're going to be having an incredible guest speaker who is going to talk about how she shows up every day, how she helps women across all sectors show up every day. And you'll leave with some really tactical opportunities for being the best version of yourself in 2021. So we're going to get some information out very quickly about this event. I couldn't be more excited. It's in partnership with our friends at Fidelity and also with Guild Mortgage, you're um, going to leave with some extra 
take homes from that day. So I just, I am really so excited to be putting this together. Yeah, yeah. and Lindsay's your guest speaker and, uh, and I believe her last name is, is pronounced, I, I brought it up in front of me just to make sure I did. <laughs> uh, uh, it's Malin Burns, I believe is, is the correct way to pronounce it. Uh, she is the, um, the Chief Business Development and Marketing Officer for Fenimore Craig. One of the That's oldest right. firms in uh, Arizona, and, uh, and and she is amazing. So uh, yeah. anybody who is joining uh -huh. you is going to have an amazing day of and a, and a great experience. So, You're not going to want to miss that. It's going to be huge. No, great. this is an awesome opportunity. I'm just I'm so excited for it. Yeah, excellent. Phenomenal. Okay, well, you guys, this I I know that uh, Annette mentioned at the beginning she was having some internet problems, and it looks like they have overcome her. They <laughs> <laughs> um, so took her. <laughs> yeah. So thank you everybody for thank you guys for 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 being on today. So appreciate you. So appreciate your your sharing and and willingness to do this. So so thank you, and we look forward to seeing you guys next week. And uh, and, yep. and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Brandon. Indeed, thanks, thanks Tom. Great, Goodbye. great hour. Bye, guys. See ya.